Good day guys, this is Nick at Stridewise.com where I look at men's boots and apparel that's built to last. Today I thought I would get back to my roots and review a little known boot that's not super crazy well known, you know, so you can decide if it's right for you. This boot is handmade in Italy, made with suede, is resolvable, and it's 215 bucks. Uh, all of this is pretty hard to believe this price point and I did a lot of digging to try and find as many answers as I could for you guys to kind of get to the bottom of this uh, kind of unusual kind of gem of a boot. This is the Bitflex from Astaflex. Astaflex, the brand, is a little hard to learn much about, but it's for reasons many would consider desirable, namely it's Italian, and they don't have much info in English on the website. But what I was able to figure out is that this company is run by Fabio Travanzoli, whose family has been in Castel de Rio in northern Italy making shoes since the 19th century. They say this company Astaflex was founded in the 19th century, but I think it's more like this family has been working in like the same factory since then or something, you know? Kind of like uh, Carmina in Spain, There's, their family has been there making shoes continually since the 19th century, but the company technically has had a couple different names and iterations throughout the decades. Anyway, it's still a very old generational skill uh, involved in Astaflex. You can see in this video footage, they are indeed handmade in a cool factory in Northern Italy, about hundred miles east of Milan. They have a range of different styles. Uh, what they all seem to have in common is an emphasis on flexibility, partly from a big emphasis on crepe soles. And while they've got a range of leathers, suede seems to get the spotlight at Astaflex. So suede uppers, crepe soles, uh, flexible construction, and uh, they do have like slippers and lace-ups. Probably their, their boat shoes and chuckers are more popular than the Chelsea's, but I'm on a Chelsea kick these days. And the online retailer Huckberry, who sells them in the US, sent me the Bitflex boot to try out for a few weeks I've been wearing this. For your first glance, what you want to notice is that these have a wider toe than Chelsea boots tend to have. It's not super wide or splayed out, but I, it's worth remembering, Chelsea's didn't start as work boots. They were like Victorian walking boots pioneered by the Queen of England. Like they don't have as much boot DNA, like work boot DNA, as a lot of welted boots out there. And as such, you're more likely to see them geared to city folk and built on more elegant, slim la. Good examples are Carmina's Chelsea's. Even Taylor Stitch's rugged Chelsea's though, which I adore by the way, have a pretty narrow kind of almond toe. The Bitflex's toe is more round. Like it's not as bulbous as Red Wing's classic Chelsea. There is more room for your toes in these than a lot of Chelsea's out there. And they lean more casual than most Chelsea's. Boy, I'm saying the word Chelsea a lot. Um, hopefully that gave you a picture of what to look for here. Another casual thing about these boots is the crepe sole, of course, which is nice and soft and cushy as crepe soles are wont to be. It also sucks up a lot of dirt as crepe soles are wont to do. So uh, here's your proof, I've been wearing these a fair amount lately. They're great for just like kind of slipping on to run errands, especially because again, they have like a more casual last. And while we're talking about the sole, let's talk about the construction here, because I had a lot of trouble figuring this out. If a boot is resolvable, usually that's advertised pretty prominently, but nowhere on Huckberry or Astaflex's site does the word resolable or resole appear, right? So I was inclined to assume these were cemented soles with a fake stitch running around the perimeter, which is not uncommon and which would make sense given how inexpensive these boots are. But after lots of prodding and going back and forth with Huckberry and their buyer, I, I found out about a new form of shoe construction that I'd never heard of before. And neither did Rose Anvil, by the way, when I asked him about it. It's called ideal stitching. So it's considered a kind of stitch down and very few manufacturers use it. According to findsourcing.com, it features an outsole with an offset in the tread pattern, leaving room for a heavy stitch to stitch down the upper to the welt and through the outsole. Now, there is no stitching through the outsole here, so I'm inclined to believe that it's stitched through this like vegetable tan leather midsole and then the crepe sole is glued on. I also want to talk about the brand's eco-friendly uh, bent here, right? Like they talk a lot about being eco-friendly, like the glues they use are water-based, the, the rubber is natural, the lining and insoles are vegetable tan. Uh, so like the leather is soaked for about 30 days in old-fashioned tannins like oak bark and mimosa without any dyes or color finishes. Uh, that makes the leather like, kind of hypoallergenic, but I couldn't get any information like that on the uppers. Some of the language suggests the uppers are also vegetable tanned for 30 days in vegetable tannins, but since no one is specifically saying they're vegetable tanned uppers, I am inclined to believe it's combination tanned, if that matters to you. Uh, it doesn't matter a ton to me if the leather is from somewhere like Italy, because 
places like Italy do have stringent rules around like tannery regulations and making sure there's no uh, chrome 6 runoff in waterways or anything. That is a common fear with uh, chrome tanned or combination tanned leather, like the pollution. I did a whole video up here if you want to learn more about that whole subject. Chrome tanning also makes for softer leather and uh, these had a really nice break in and I didn't have any issues with them. So. There's another upside of this leather. Sizing wise, it is the same as most boots, half a size down from your true size. A uh, whole size from what your sneaker probably is. Or I'm an 11 in Red Wing and Wolverine, Atlante, Grant Stone, Thursday. I'm an 11 in these. They don't do half sizes, big downside, but plenty of guys get them true to size and say they're fine. So I would say size down to your nearest whole size. And if you are a whole size, just get that. No wide sizes though, I'm afraid. But a lot of wide-footed guys say, like on Reddit, they say that these fit them really well because they're roomier than most Chelsea's. So I wouldn't stress too much if you're an e -win. That's about my review of these boots, man. That the pros are that the value is very good. They are resolable. They're pretty roomy for a Chelsea, pretty darn roomy for a Chelsea. They're comfortable as well, very comfortable with the crepe sole and they're lined as well, they're, they're leather lined. Made in Italy, by hand, by old-timey family of shoemakers. That's the kind of uh, imagery a lot of guys like their boots to evoke. The leather is surprisingly good. It's fairly thick. Uh, it, it was stiff in a good way when I first got them. It has a solid leather midsole, and, and they're very, very, very inexpensive for what you're getting. Like, very inexpensive. These shoes punch way above their weight. It's a great, great deal, and uh, that's why I wanted to do a video on them, basically, to let you know about them. The downsides, there's no shank. The arch support isn't anything to write home about, uh, but it, it's roomy enough to fit an install if you do need one. The shanklessness also makes some people worry about durability after a couple of years. Ditto the glued on the crepe sole. But again, they are, they are resolvable, so any issues there can be fixed if they arise. Not everyone likes the dirty look of crepe rubber, especially because bits of dirty rubber kind of uh, collect around the perimeter of the sole, around the toe. Um, they're also, crepe soles also aren't great in rain, they don't have great longevity. Uh, that's just the trade off though with, with crepe soles for the, for the softness and comfort that you get. So it's just like, you have to kind of just make that deal. Uh, lastly, some guys don't care for their more casual look. I saw one guy on Reddit say, uh, quote, they don't neatly fit into a category in my brain. Like they're kind of chunky, but not really. And I can see what he means. Like, like I said, they don't go full chunky like Red Wings Chelsea, but they're also not elegant and slim either, right? Some guys will consider that versatile. Other guys would say that they're too hard to, to categorize as a boot. So I don't know, that might cause you a crisis. That's it. That's everything, man. These are really, really good value. I, I just couldn't believe they were Italian made and resolvable when I saw the price. But uh, I've asked around, I've read the forums, the consensus is they're pretty solid. Astroflex is, is pretty solid, man. Uh, most people get their Chaka and their, they're called the Green Flex and their loafers called the Patno Flex. The Chelsea's aren't as popular, but I just wanted Chelsea's. I encourage you to check out the whole range because the brand seems to know what they're doing. They're, they're pretty good and uh, definitely great value. Astroflex, man, let me know if you like them. Uh, that's the video. Subscribe if you kind of wound up here because uh, I got plenty of boot reviews, boot content. And also just like, yeah, jackets and shirts and other kind of stuff that's like made to last. That's the kind of stuff I like. So yeah, subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.